Hi there. Uh, we're here in Port Jolly today. We're working on two living shorelines. We have one that has been rocked up and is um, you know, fortified with that hard engineering and one that is a more of a beachfront and is uh, losing sediment quickly. So we're working on both today. It's kind of the juxtaposition of both ends of our living shoreline spectrum. Uh, working with people who already have rock walls and then working with others who are deciding not to put in a rock wall and want to do a plant-based uh, strategy instead. So it's a, it's a very interesting day. It's super exciting. It's sort of like uh, creating new life and bringing together all kinds of resources and materials and humans to do the work and really getting the sense of how the ecosystem is responding to climate change and then interjecting appropriate plants and appropriate um, strategies to really help knit it back together and carry sediment, hold on to it, and, uh, and re-nourish the ecosystem as a whole. Are we dragging brush from a pile that is going to need to be cleaned up? Like, should we bring the rakes with us? We might want to rake some stuff into the woods, but yeah. Okay, so why don't we grab a rake too? And then we can take these ragoses and these chickens. split in half. Half of the team is working on the rock wall shoreline project and the other half is down the beach on the beachy end um, and we'll just keep moving through the process. Um, part of our work is to use as many of our own plants as possible and those of respected and um, successful dealers in the area. So we do buy some plants from other nurseries. Um, we usually buy them as small seedlings and then bring them to our nursery and grow them out in um, organic soils and we feed them well with our abundance fertilizer so that we can ensure that they're healthy and happy and that they will actually live throughout the process, the whole lifespan of the project. A few up there, we laid a bunch right here too. Okay, we'll okay, you know, yeah, you've got lots. Bring this over. essentially is stake in some of the big logs that we have under this lip where the roots kind of you can see the roots they're exposed so we want to kind of cover them up and keep them 
protected from the sun and the erosion. Um, so once we get the logs in place, we'll be putting the brush and weaving it in so that um, it stays there and it kind of encourages the growth of the plants that we're planting. Um, so over time, it'll both hold the soil in and protect it um, while also breaking down eventually and creating good soil for the plants that we're planting. that are already occurring. So if we just look over here, you can see the tree line, and then there's a shrub layer, and then it comes down to a grassy perennial layer, and then it's grassy, and then it starts to get shrubby again, and then there's a couple big trees, right? So in this location, we're actually missing part of the tree line, because all we have is mature tree in this space. So what we're gonna do is plant some more trees in that zone. So we've got spruces here that are living in this area and they're doing just great. So we're gonna add some more spruce in there. That's us mimicking nature. But what we're gonna do now as a designer is do some experimenting. So I really think that sumacs are gonna work really great on the shoreline. So we're also gonna add sumacs in here as another kind of small tree so that our, our triangle, our ecosystem triangle will be more complete. Right now it's severed. So it's our job as the builders to amend that, right? So the really important part of these plants is the root systems and the different types of roots. So each plant has a different quality of root system, um, whether it's a tap root or it's a widespreading lateral root. Um, all of these are uh, adding to the diversity of the whole ecosystem. So like a big puzzle, it's only really strong when all the pieces are there. We have our own fertilizer that we make. It's called Abundance. It includes the mycorrhizal fungi with a liquidized kelp. Uh, we bottle it uh, in our own processing. And, um, and it's the only fertilizer that we've been using for 18 years in our landscaping company. Mycorrhizal fungi is um, self-generated in a natural system. So in a forest, especially with decomposing wood material, this fungi is generated. As we uh, go through the process of planting, we're adding the mycorrhizal fungi to stimulate those roots to work quicker and uh, really stabilize their ability to ingest water and minerals out of the soil. Um, and that's a really important component is ensuring that we um, feed the plants and nourish them and nurture them to a really vital lifetime. And it's the fungi that actually 
um, allows the root system to attach to the soil globule and suck up all of the nutrients and the water that is held within the, um, the, within the soil system. So today we are planting a lot of grasses. We like to plant the Spartina and Marum grasses on beachfront properties. Um, they like to grow in sandy um, horizons and they don't mind salt water. In fact, they really like it. So uh, they're unique in the grass family in that way. So when we buy the grasses, they generally come in very large pots. So we cut the nodes apart, usually in half or quarters, um, so that we are taking one nodal clump, one sort of family unit, and uh, planting it in each hole so that we can really disperse them widely and really be sure that each one of those little clumps is excited to grow bigger once again and send off little seedlings and babies. Um, so as we cut them, we are actually stimulating them to grow better. So um, with the with the feeding and with the mycorrhizal, they'll really stretch deeply into the soil, they'll capture water, they'll be fed today and in a couple of weeks, and they'll really produce a, a large amount of grass that is doing a lot of really good work for us. So it's holding the sand in place, a binding as one part, but also the blades of the grass will be diffracting the wave energy and um, that will allow the water to actually drop the sediment in behind them. So we can see that there's an accumulation of sediment when we do the, the large grass plantings and that helps to therefore stabilize the beach front so that the, um, the above ground parts of the landscape are more um, plentiful and more long lasting, right? Completing the parts of the puzzle. I am planting the grass and uh, because it's so rocky here, there's not enough soil to actually cover um, the pieces of grass. Ugh, bad example there. So to cover the whole root ball of the grass in, so in this soil, there isn't enough soil because it's so rocky. Oh, it's, you can't dig deeply enough, you mean? Exactly. And there isn't always enough soil to cover on top of everything. So we're having to bring some soil in from the beach in order to be able to cover all of the roots here. And then for the soil that we're bringing in, just want to anchor everything with the spare rocks that are here so that it doesn't get all washed away when the sea comes in. Make sure it all stays in place. Place the cutting in there. Push some sand. So luckily this one has enough sand to cover everything. Basically we're done with digging and uh, we're, uh, we're, we're uh, what would you like us to do? What direction? Okay. Loki asked, asked for help. Yeah, Lucas needs help with the staking. Okay. So you might want to go down there and help him figure that out. Okay. Got a big black fly. Black flies have just shown up. We're, um, we're having some challenges at the other end with staking into the rocky shore. Last year when we did staking, a lot of sand was here, so it was easier to stake, and now it's all the rock is exposed, so they're trying to find ways to like get their stakes in place. So it's a bit frustrating and challenging, but um, perseverance and, uh, and youthfulness <laughs> helps a lot. So it's, uh, it's a vital work that we're doing. It's super important, uh, especially for people who have investments uh, as in their house, their infrastructure uh, right at the edge or soon you know, into, the, into the buffer zone. Um, it's important to get the plants in place so that the uh, 
uh, ecosystem is more whole and that the strength is in the whole and that it will hold and knit together the, the position. Let me bring Brendan for a second yeah. and then he's going to come on you and yeah. you guys are going to start logging. For sure. Um, this zone also needs logging done. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to start here and work that way. Yeah. He, I, I suspect he's got all the two by twos over yeah. there. So, um, yeah. Do you want to scoot down there with the wheelbarrow and so. bring yeah. like 30 or something down with you? 20 or so? The um, dispersing of materials and humans to be as efficient as possible is, is part of my job, of course. weaknesses and stuff and then working that through right so it's its own ecosystem it is yeah we talked about it yesterday as being an organism that this thing called helping nature heal right is this really a living entity of its own and we're just parts of the play right so um, asking everyone to like step into their place and if they really like doing a certain task then go with that and run with it and excel in that and then learn something new right so that we're not all jibber jabbery in all different locations yeah mm -hmm. so that is interesting for sure working with a, a whole slew of wonderful young folks yeah really great so lucas this yes. section needs to be logged as well